Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ivan, DJ Superfly, once more to give you a little update on the newest version of Mix Emergency. Uh, it's a newer uh, update that came about a year ago, I believe. Uh, every year, they seem to be updating pretty much uh, everything. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that they release, and it's pretty cool because they tend not to like spread the word about it online. I have no idea why. But this is like the best video software mixing there is out there. Um, I wish they would get more clout for this, but a lot of the DJs, they tend to stick with just basic stuff, which is, you know, Serato video, or a lot of people use, you know, virtual DJ, uh, mostly because of the uh, uh, the videos and all that. But I'm going to show you, uh, give you an update. I did a video a long time ago reviewing this uh, software. It's in my channel. You guys can look for it. It's, it's a very detailed one, and it kind of goes back to show you you know what it does and how it works but i kind of just want to go over about the newer stuff that's out here with uh mix emergency 3 um with it being faster cooler lighter meaning that you know with newer laptops and uh let me put it out there that this is only a mac software it only works with mac for the reason that there's you know specific codecs that work with the video software and all part of that but um one of the major ones is here uh well the that's a, the, the old video, so I took a snapshot of what it we used to look like before. Um, but since, you know, Apple has be, been releasing all these new MacBooks and all that, uh, uh, Mixed Emergency has definitely um, been able to save a lot of the CPU. So I don't know, a lot of the DJs, video DJs back then would encounter a lot of the uh, waveforms in Serato would be jumping. You know, they kind of wouldn't be in, in a set way of like, it being smooth but now since we have all these retina screens and all that everything looks kind of higher definition so with be that being said Inkland had to jump in and make a whole new way of, of uh, doing these types of videos but uh, another good way that they added is they added some features uh, known as HAP and HAP Alpha it's a new codec out there that uh, allows you to use way less CPU uh, so that way your your computer's not stressing, so the software doesn't crash, um, so Serato doesn't crash. Uh, and they have pretty cool things you could do with the new sample player as well. Um, and there's a bunch of cool little features here. Um, and of course, it being that it supports all the video files out there, most commonly known, you know, that are out in the DJ pools and all that uh, image files as well. We could do quartz compositions, which you know it's a pretty big thing. Uh, with custom visuals and all that and it also does karaoke files I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it here I've got Serato running I'll go ahead and play these two tracks you guys can see the videos and these are just videos so what I like about it is you know it's a third-party plugin uh, like I mentioned before it allows you to run basically any videos that Serato reads and it just reads the information from them and displays it into this software so this is a lot of stuff going on right now um, and I normally don't have all these things popped up, but uh, I'm going to go through with you the details about the new stuff that they've dropped. Um, and to start with, we're going to go ahead with the sample players, which is down here. Uh, one of the cool things that I like to do and what a lot of our, us DJs like to do is definitely when we're running samples and, and you know, we want to drop in your sample of like, let's say you're in the mix with DJ Superfly. So I MIDI this button here to whenever I hit that sample button on my uh, Rain 72. It will, it will display the voice, it will say the voice, and it will also display my logo. I kind of set it to a, a smaller range, but you kind of see there. Whenever it says, you're in the mix with DJ Superfly, this is what's going to pop up on the screen automatically. Uh, when I hit the horn, it's going to hit, you know, the, whatever club I am. Um, and uh, another sample, it's like a horn, I can't remember what it is. Uh, but this is pretty cool feature to have because it allows you to have various images you can have videos you can have you can have a whatsapp logo and the text for it too I have a tor torgies another place where i go and, and dj so um you can definitely go into the settings there you can change the blends and how you want it to look on your screen whether you want it to look you know how i did had it right now opacity where it's kind of blended into the video you can have it specifically for a, a, a certain loop amount uh, depending on the video uh, this is an image file so of course it's not uh, looping you can do a pitch you know again this will all information about if you have a video on it or not 
um, play from start or you can override the duration just kind of see what I had earlier it's only going to be for two seconds up in the screen so if I hit that kind of for two seconds and there it's gone um, it, it all depends on how you want it how you want to set it up in your in your in your system you can you know rearrange it if you want it in the middle how I have it off to the side up or down um, it's all there there's a pretty cool way of doing it through beats as well if you wanted to display by beats um, but this is again this is definitely how ever you want to go into it see what it's doing there by beats you can have it do it a scroll mount you can have it to do a let's see a beats there and it's doing it by beat so it's going off based on the beat grid in Serato so that's why it's important to analyze your, all your files in Serato because it goes by this um, and it's definitely a cool thing to have and here's the crossfader so this crossfader information is meeting now so a lot of the controllers and mixers are able to detect you know whatever crossfader you're using um, so this information has been sent out to um, mix emergency so I can't really put it out there let's see if I can maybe do this and have it there we go the middle one see this big screen over here the middle one is kind of the, the main one we got left uh, deck A and deck B you can kind of see it there and you can kind of see over here in the software in next emergency it does pick up that crossfader so again a lot of these new controllers and everything have that MIDI capability of reading that so um, which is cool we'll go back to mix emergency here so you can kind of see that logo just going up and down I mean you can set it up however you want it you know up to four beats have a display every four beats every eight eight beats you can you know you just pretty much mess with it however you want uh, and it, just have it go through however you want but I kind of just have it set just to show you guys you can always reset the points to how you had it before and you just get super creative on how you want to have these show up on TVs or screens or whatever you're using um, go in here and just add any of the type of different uh, blend modes kind of see it blends on the back um, and I like to use this for you know big clubs that you know you want to display they're in a pretty cool area and just basically just blending it to some type of um, setting here however you want it um, but it's different for every logo like this one won't really show it that much I'm trying to get it to blend but oh I know why because I have this on so there kind of see it on the back you can add the beats to it as well have it show up for certain different uh, colors of the video um, but yeah this is definitely one of the cool things to have uh, you can do it all through um, MIDI like I said I have the first four MIDI and this is just pretty much open to whatever um, like let's say I have a video file I want to put down and just display displayed up in the screen just in case for it but there's different banks for it just like Serato has different banks for their um, all their uh, effects and all that how you want to display you want to display whether always being on side A side B or a master and the mix it being you know how much capacity you want to it um, so this is pretty cool like I said this is one of the, the newer features that a lot of people don't really realize that mix emergency has really dropped um, a pretty good uh, a good uh, amount of uh, resource because it, it has helped me a lot um, in the future so we'll move on next to one of the newer things is the effects here um, these can be mediated or I think in most of the mixers or controllers you know I have the the high the mid low and the filter knobs on your mixer you can have these do certain things to the video so let's say when you, you're turning that filter you kind of see there have it set up to do a specific thing um, on the yeah, uh, pink side it's doing two things it's bumping and it's got this FB part of it and it's going at every beat uh, so it allows it to like blend out pretty cool or if we go up it kind of gives me an LED type of screen with dots and oops, let's turn it off on or on but um, basically what it is is you can have two 
different things on it. So if you move it to the left side, it's the pink. If you move it up to the right, it's yellow. So for this one up here, you kind of see this is uh, um, for the first one is over here. And for the second channel is this one. So whatever you want to have uh, a different type. There's so many, so many different effects that you can apply for it. Again, you know, we're mostly going to be dealing with uh, a lot of the um, the filter, or you can MIDI a, a specific FX button to any of your controllers if you wanted to have it do a specific thing. Um, it only do once, I believe. So if you have it up once, it's only going to show it once. But I think I have it turned off. Well, let's see here. So you can turn something on, and yeah, so it's got a brightness looking. Just to whatever setting you want to have, so it makes it look uh, a different with your visual performance of DJing. Um, so that's pretty cool, um, and you can do so many things with this. Is it just depends, you know. Sometimes like there's songs that don't have enough bass, so I'll just pump the bass a little bit more, and you kind of see the video gets like whoa, a little, a little, little uh, unfocused and, and and blurry, which is cool, you know. It lets you know that hey, there's more bass to this track added. And not only did I did it in the mixture, it automatically did it on here. So a pretty cool thing. Again, you can MIDI map all these things. I'll show you that how to do it uh, towards the end of the video. Um, so that's one of the cool things here. I'm gonna close this now. I'll get this one out of the way. All right. Uh, let's see one of the newer things that they have is this media sequence editor. A lot of people don't know what this is. And I wouldn't be surprised because there's no tutorials out there um, about how to use this thing. So I'm going to kind of go in a little bit of detail about what it does. Um, basically, you can drop a lot of media files on here. Um, and I like to drop all eight if I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With different things. Um, and I'll show you what it does here. But let me go ahead and drop some stuff so that... And it, again, these are just random stuff, so pay no attention if if uh, if it doesn't look correct in the video or whatever. These are just samples, so bear with me, guys. I'm just going to add some stuff, and I'm going to see if I can add some videos as well. I think I can add videos straight from here. Let's see. Yep. It's just random visuals I have here. So, oh, we're going to base it off beats. Yep, beats. Everything's going to be based off of beats. Beat, beat. So <clears throat> at every eight, uh, eight beat, it's going to change from this one to this one to this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a major uh, file, and we'll do it at random. So this is a, uh, an internal software uh, system file that it will create that only Mix Emergency will read. Um, we're going to you know change it up here and there. Do 16 beats for you know every random one so that way it doesn't look all weird. And we're gonna save it. So we're gonna save it here to my desktop and it's gonna create a sequence. So all these files are gonna go into one file. Right? So we gotta look for it here, and it's right here. And basically what we can do with it, we can load it into the sample and we can ask it to play it. And it's reading again, it's going through based off the beats of the video. And it's pretty slow right now, but you can kind of see that every 8 beats, 16 beats, it's going to go ahead and display all these random uh, files that we added on here. It could be, you know, pictures, it could be logos, it could be depending on what you want on there. I want to see if the visual one comes up. Uh -huh. And it might take a while though too, so there, there it is. Cool. Uh, this is a very high definition video, so I won't really show that much. Um, but you can go ahead and mess with this as much as you want. And it's pretty cool, again, because uh, you can do so many things. Even with having it in the sample player, you can basically just have it displayed on a specific corner. You know, if you're just displaying different logos and all that. So you can drop it off in the corner. You kind of see from the little video. If I wouldn't add that video, that would have came up on there. Scale it how you want and how you want it to always show. Or you can just you know reset it, have it how it was before, have it right in the middle. Um, it just depends. So that could be again used in the sample player there, or you can drop it off into the media bank here. Oh, no, I can't do it from there. I gotta do it from here. 
So the media bank. Now this is something we're going to talk about next. Um, in the media bank, uh, I know a lot of DJs tend to stick with, you know, uh, virtual DJ or Serato video, but they don't realize that if they play an audio file, I'm going to jump into this and I'm going to turn mix emergency because this allows it to be always be on top. But since I have so many stuff on top, um, I'm going to go ahead and load just audio only files. I'm just going to loop them so it stays on. And these are audio only files. Um, you can see there's no video file. And every time we do that, see that? It loaded an automatic um, visual from this media player here. So you can load up, uh, load up various visuals. There's a bunch of free ones on, on just about anywhere. There's a lot of cool designers that are letting their, to let us use their, um, their VJ loops and all that. And I highly recommend them because they're uh, allowing us to download the HAP, HAP version of them which again, it allows for the CPU to be very low. Um, you kind of see over here in Serato, up here, if you never wanted to notice how much CPU your stuff is using, um, is all this. I'm probably using a little bit more because I'm recording the whole screen and it being right in the screen, of course. But every time you load a new song, that uh, visual is going to change. It's basically going to change into uh, whatever is in here. So we're going to try to, you I mean, you can, you can, I think, load it. Yeah. Yep. See what I did? You can load it manually to whatever deck that it's actually playing on the video file. So you can kind of see here, whatever. Oh, I want this video, that video, but I kind of wanted to show you that it will randomly play uh, this file, this media sequence file that we made earlier. It's going to do it there, and it's going to do with the whole reflection part of it, the whole border fill. If it's not, you know, a 16 by 9 video or whatever it is, um, kind of want to see what it does here. Oh, so yeah, it was playing various stuff, and it's going by beats. So again, we're going somewhere by eight and somewhere by sixteen, and it's a random order. So you know, you keep your guests, your clients, or or whoever you're DJing for, you keep them guessing because it's always going to be a different video and whatnot. You can have multiple versions of these as well. You can have another another one loaded, for example. Well, it's only going to load the same one. Um, I wonder if we can duplicate it. Uh, I think we're able to duplicate and make another. Yep, so you can have another one, for example, there. It looks that way again because I have the reflect button here. You can turn that off, of course. And it's going to go randomly, you know, and they're going to go by beats. Um, or one of the cool things that I like to do is have like a strobe part of it here. I'll turn on the, the strobe here if I can find it. Here it is. And it'll go towards the beat. So. So that's another cooler feature to have, that it's going to the beat. See, it's like strobing to the beat. Uh, so it looks all pretty much, much synced to everything. Um, that way it just looks pretty cool and, and presentable in my case, because again, when you're, when you're dealing with videos, you know, you're adding a whole different show to whatever setup is at, at your, your venue. You know, the venue that I do has got, you know, big LED screen and I'll get that to uh, in a moment. But um, let's go and stop all this stuff because there's so much stuff going on. So we'll just turn this off. Uh, go back to Serrano. And I'm going to show you here, if I run, randomly load it, load songs, it's going to randomly load other video files that I have under my media. Uh, bank there you can kind of see I'll just go randomly loading them so you can see there and this is cool because again you know it, it this is an audio file and whenever you randomly load stuff into mix emergency it's going to load up a random uh, media file and you can do that under the settings of mix emergency but i think i covered that in the first video so if you guys want to go watch that video, I'll link it in the description. It's a pretty long one. Um, not a lot of people have covered the whole detail about how Mixed Emergency works, but I kind of just, like I said, I wanted to go through the newer stuff that they offer. Um, one of the biggest things, though, now is what they're doing is um, it's either siphon out. Uh, I don't know if a lot of DJs out there are using, uh, or VJs, I should say, uh, are using softwares like uh, Grand VJ or Archaos DJ uh, or Resolume, which tends to be the biggest one because a lot of the famous big DJs they want to use, you know, kind of cool visuals and all that and want to be timed to exactly how the visuals are going to show 
tours the sound a song or whatever it is but I know most of that is a big production part of it and it's harder for us to do but one of the cool things that uh, Mix Emergency allows you to do now is implementing that uh, siphon out input or output we go into the Mix Emergency settings here we're gonna go into sharing um, so here we have the siphon output and we can have both so siphon is is it's gonna internally send the file this main output file into a, a layer in Resolume I have Resolume here let me just see if I can if I have it I don't think I have it on this computer no I might have deleted it oh my gosh I might have deleted it because I probably didn't even need it anymore anyways you can load this into one of those layers and and have um, it displayed to another uh, uh, a projector or whatever you're using however you want it to be displayed um, this is an internal part of it and a lot of the the DJs out and there's a lot of videos about this um, out in YouTube about you know how to use this but I want to get to my next point which is a very important one because this is the NDI output this allows for your um, main video out to be outputted through network network a cat 5 cat 6 I highly recommend cat 6 um, and this is what I use at my gig uh, on my residence on Saturdays it's a Latin gig um, I have they put me in a spot kind of a little bit further away from where the computer and the, that controls the main um, LED wall I'll show you a video here in a moment but this allows for you to for you to run um, video the video output from your computer out through a cat 6 cable and it allows you to set it through you know whatever uh, amount of quality you want to output it and all that but once you have this selected you can basically just not even have any of this stuff on I'm gonna close this and close the main window um, for all of this because again you're not going to need all this stuff if you're going to be dealing with uh, I'm going to find the I'll close this one text overlay I kind of like having this info up because it allows me to see what um, what I'm outputting to so the main video and we don't need this one I kind of this is what I like to leave up for my stuff and what's pretty cool is you can arrange these two you can make them smaller bigger um, set them off to the sides you can have them down here and, and they're always going to be on top so if you click to another um, software it's always going to be on top so again we're just randomly adding things but the NDI what it allows it to do um, you can see the output there is you can either do it you can do it both ways you can I'll put it using uh, a network cable or you can transfer it computer to computer yes you can do this computer to computer so let's say you know a lot of collaborator DJs out there they want to uh, uh, put a whole video DJ mix together but they don't know how to get that uh, video out to one source because you know most of the venues are only going to have one source of video um, to be able to do that you need to have both computers connected somehow so one of the good things with the NDI the new NDI technology it's an open source software um, you can do this through Wi-Fi if you wanted to you can do it over your, your small router uh, whatever way you feel best is to share the video file you can do this uh, uh, that way but the newer technology nowadays is Thunderbolt so you can actually have a Thunderbolt cable uh, running towards these two computers configure the IP address and make sure you know they're, they're reading with each other connecting to each other you can have one master you can have the one being the master right and the second being the slave so uh, once your once master one is done you can do that through here you can actually do it through the mixed emergency allow it to um, I don't want to put I shouldn't have closed that I'm sorry guys Oh, this output here so here's the input you want um, and of course it's only showing mine but if I was to connect anything from uh, a different computer into my computer let's say I'm done you know mixing or whatever it is um, or you can do it by deck so let's say on uh, the left deck this deck here uh, deck A should be this should be my computer and let's say deck B is going to be the, the other computer which is connected directly into the network uh, directly to the computer via network or Thunderbolt you can have this whenever you move the cross the crossfade over to, to 
the next uh, uh, DJ, it's going to show theirs. And then you're just going to basically switch both of them, or you're going to go into the um, into the software here and allow for the NDI input. I'm going to turn it off here and, and turn it off. Uh, it's not playing because of the audio file not being there. Um, but that's pretty cool. Again, you can do that through network. And I'm going to show you here how I do it with the uh, with mine. Sorry, this is a presentation I had earlier, and I had some stuff that I wanted to put on there. Um, I'm going to show you that quick video here. So that's the big screen that we use uh, at the social. You see it there. It's a big LED screen. So um, and this is my first time trying it. I wanted to make sure that it worked. Uh, this was sometime last year. There's the mixed emergency. You can see it there in my laptop. And I'm running the NDI output, like how I have the settings here. You can kind of see here off to the left. There's the USB-C to um, Ethernet connection, right? You, you can see that I have no other cables connected to it, just that one. I'm going to show you that that cable runs down to the router. There's a smaller router with a bunch of different devices. And this server computer here is running all their um, internal uh, uh, video software so because th they like to display you know, sports on the TVs and all that. So they'll, they'll tend to split half the video to one channel and then the other half to the other channel. But here I just created a layer with the NDI input. You kind of see it there. Um, and I have more. I did the same thing. I basically added half to one screen, half to the other screen so they can see the whole video. Um, but this, per this video was purposely just to show um, that you can do it over network. You kind of see there. And that cable is a pretty long cable. I believe that cable is a 50 foot cable. And, you know, I got to wrap a bunch of it up because I don't use it all. Um, and again, that would, sometimes there might be delay. You know, I don't, I don't recommend it doing it Wi-Fi because, you know, there's a lot of interference and you're going to see a delay on the audio versus the video. You know, it's like a lip sync type of thing where <laughs> it's going to be a big delay. Uh, you can fix that. There's ways to fix that through mixed emergency um, and the delay compensation which is here in advance it allows you see I have it under 0 0.10 because that's what the the network because I think I believe is because I have a 50 foot um, cat 6 cable running into it uh, basically it's pretty cool because you're allowed to view the helper and it just shows you on the screen you know the screen on your computer here let's see if we can play go to Serato play from the beginning so we can get we'll loop it again and then we'll display the main output of the video I tend to keep closing a lot of this stuff so this is what so you see the delay there so this is my computer here right this is the type of uh, the setting I have it because it takes you know like 0.10 milliseconds or whatever for the cable to run all that information into the router and into the computer and to have it display and to be matching with the audio correctly so this is a helper it allows you to see um, through the whole process of uh, to making sure that it it matches up so it's a pretty cool thing to have um, gonna advance and just have your setup here and then have the, uh, the main this is the main output into the bigger screen but if I move that, you can kind of see it's going to match now. So, so we move it. See, now they're both matching. But it was 0.10. I'll leave it at a 0.10 because I don't want to mess it up. Um, that it, it left it so that it the, the video matches with the audio. <laughs> and it looks cool. But again, this is just a helper tool to have. Um, and yeah, and so if you guys have any questions about all this new stuff, just let me know. And uh, reach out to me on my socials or whatever it is, and I'll help you out with whatever you need. But otherwise, I highly recommend this program. It's a pretty cool program to have. And, yeah, so we'll see you guys in the next time. See ya.